Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. In today's video I'm so excited to bring you guys a look at the Transformers Studio Series Bumblebee movie Voyager Class Soundwave. Probably the hottest SS release we've gotten in quite some time. To be honest with you I can't remember being this excited for a release ever since I finally completed Devastator last year as Soundwave from the Bumblebee movie is honestly one of my favourite designs and pretty much any of the official slash non-official figures that we've gotten released of him have been for the most part absolute home run. So when Hasbro and Takara announced they were finally going to be doing their own version of this guy honestly I was just so excited to see as to what they would come up with and it's safe to say they absolutely delivered the only way I think they could top this would be if they were to create a movie masterpiece figure and honestly I wouldn't put it past them as this design is wicked now we'll waste no time at all and get stuck straight into the video you can see in regards to detail they've done a smashing job in recreating his head sculpt of course Travis Knight took heavy inspiration from the G1 design and truly updated it in order to match the modern movie aesthetic and I think he did an incredible job honestly these are the designs that I really hope we can see going forward for the films as they're just so refreshing and really are a great blend of the old and the new. You can see we've got some amazing paintwork going on here for the face, a super cool mix of silver blue as well as red there for the visor. You can see as we spin our attention to the side of Soundwave's head, we've got some really cool Cybertronian tech details. And even as we take a look here towards the back, you can see once more very nicely detailed, albeit we do have a transparent section here at the back, but this doesn't in fact actually aid light piping as they have actually painted this entire visor in red. Not entirely sure as to why they've done that, but still it looks great. You can see here we've got the massive rocket launcher here as a shoulder cannon. This looks super impressive. You can see the detailing even towards the back looks as if though it's literally a shrunken down version of the 3.0 version. They've done such a wicked job. You can see to here towards the front we've got some nice red detailing and even here at the actual barrel of the blaster you can see there's some of the bullets as well as the silver detail which just looks great. Now here for the whole torso region probably one of the most iconic assets of Soundwave we of course have the cassette deck. Now this has been painted for the most part pretty nicely if you are actually able to take a look in the box. I would definitely recommend to watch out for some of the paint as you can see sadly some of this gold has it chipped off but still really nice detail especially where the red lining is concerned you can see there the Decepticon insignia the sculpt work all looks really nice I'm not a huge fan of these tabs that we've got sticking out of the sides but to be fair considering it transforms I guess I can't really complain all that much you can see here for the shoulders very nicely done really does look very accurate to the film same can also be said here from a side perspective you can see the bicep armor looks great lovely mechanical detailing here for the side of the forearm and once more here for the actual elbow joint of course we've got the red stripe that goes around the wrist and some wicked detailing going on for the fingers now as we take a look here at the back of Soundwave literally no kibble at all now granted Soundwave never transformed in the movie so that really did allow Hasbro and Takara to solely focus on the bot mode as you guys all know I prioritize bot mode over vehicle mode any day of the week and this is definitely a prime example as the vehicle mode is probably one of the worst things that we've ever seen across the entire SS line but to be honest with you I don't care at all as I think this bot mode looks awesome you can see the attention to detail just looks so so nice we've even got some spinal detailing here at the rear section of Soundwave you can see some really nice sculpt work going on for the back of the arms and then as we just take a look here towards the front we've got some of those G1 nods such as the cassette buttons once again some of that nice gun metal to amplify the mechanical sculpt you can see here for the thighs sadly some hollow spacing but this is no doubt something that a third party company such as DNA Design will come out and easily remedy and they've even actually sculpted some of this as well so you can see there some nice mechanical components and then as we just take a look towards the lower section of the figure once more I think the shins have all turned out really nicely as so has the foot design so overall in terms of detailing as well as paint I think they've really done a terrific job by far one of their best that they've ever produced literally all of these b-movie figures appear to just be so nicely done the designers really have put a lot of care and attention into them now in regards to articulation Soundwave does have a ball joint here at the head which can look left to right up and down as well as tilt side to side slightly we do in fact get a rotation here at the shoulder which can go the full 360 as well as hinge out to the side due to transformation the shoulders are on their own separate joints so if you do wish for the shoulder to follow the actual forearm I would recommend actually gripping this here at the top and moving it as if you do just take the forearm you will utilize the transformation joint which will begin to in fact actually untab this entire upper region we do get a rotation at the bicep we do get a double joint here at the elbow although sadly it can only bend slightly past 90 no form of wrist rotation which is a shame as I definitely think they could have in fact actually found a way to have given that but nevertheless we do get a waist rotation albeit rather ugly as you do have to lift this panel up and then as you rotate it to the side there's no way in order to actually collapse that down so that does kind of stick out from the side which doesn't look the best but this can rotate the full 360 you can see that also exposes some lovely mechanical detail the legs can kick forwards that far back to that far as well as out to the sides rotation at the thigh as well as a double joint here at the knee and something which is super cool mainly due to transformation is we actually have kneecaps that can in fact conceal this ugly joint so you can pop this here over the top which just looks splendid once again this is literally like a 3-0 figure shrunken down and
and of course at the mass retail price point and you can see that also exposes some really nice detail as we take a look here towards the foot this can pivot forwards and backwards rock side to side as well as in fact actually rotate left to right so definitely one of the most poseable ss figures if they're just giving him wrist joints he probably would have been the most poseable out of them all now here for the actual rocket launcher this can in fact hinge up and down in order to get out of the way for posing as well as rotate left to right so this of course is an accessory and then we also do get a second accessory that being Soundwave's rifle which sadly we never actually see him use on Cybertron but I think the detailing on that looks absolutely fantastic and it definitely matches what we very briefly saw on screen it just would have been wicked if we could have seen him actually deploy this and take down Optimus or some of the Autobots with that's been coated once again in a very nice gunmetal and you can peg it into either of the hands so let's just slot it into this side sadly due to there being no wrist rotation it's quite difficult to get him in a natural pose you can't in fact actually get two hands gripping it which is a slight shame but other than that such a splendid looking figure really really awesome he does have one gimmick and that is in fact that you can deploy the cassette deck so if we push this button here of course you can have ravage eject <laughs> and Ravage of course would shoot out but I'm saving Ravage for a later core class review but you can see he would store in there and it does in fact actually reveal some pretty nice detailing of which we'll see during transformation so without further ado that just about wraps up Soundwave here for robot mode let's bring out some comparisons so first up here's Soundwave compared next to Cybertronian Starscream Bumblebee Voyager class thrust B movie Optimus Prime and I actually really like that Soundwave is in fact head to head with Prime Soundwave has always been a rather overshadowed character he is in fact incredibly strong and I actually really love that the night version of Soundwave really does look as if though he could go head to head with Prime and maybe in fact actually take him out so once again hoping this guy does in fact actually have a substantial role in the upcoming Rise of the Beasts movie as I would just love to see this incarnation of Soundwave try his best in order to take down Optimus Prime and here with a live action movie Soundwave comparison you can see that we've got the new B movie version compared next to the Revenge of the Fallen satellite version as well as the Doc the Moon Mercedes version now I'll be completely honest and say that I am a die hard Bayverse fan. I've always loved the live action movies and I've always been a massive fan of the design so I'm not a G whiner in the slightest but even I can't deny that this Bumblebee movie Soundwave looks absolutely fantastic and in all honesty absolutely obliterates what we've seen from the previous films. Travis Knight did such an exceptional job. This is just such an iconic design for the character whereas the previous Bayverse versions really did look as if though they could just be standard proto forms. They really had no personality to them at all. They were either gunmetal or incredibly darkly coloured and I just think this is just Soundwave to a T. This is the design that we should have gotten from the beginning and after so many movies I'm so glad to see it finally realized here in the Bumblebee film and rounding off with what is probably the best comparison Here we've got the B-movie Soundwave compared next to the G1 inspired Netflix version and straight off the bat You can just see evidently how much inspiration Travis Knight truly took from the G1 design just alone in the cassette deck They look so similar He truly did an incredible job in taking what was an 80s cartoon and applying it into a live-action movie format even as we turn here to the back you can see similarities in regards to the actual tech detail he just did such an incredible job honestly a really really awesome design you can see for the over the shoulder cannon whilst this one in my opinion is so much more badass than the actual Netflix version the design traits are still there of course these would in fact also have the red strip around the edge and you can see that there evidently for that the blasters are a little different although there is in fact an add-on that comes with the core class ravage where you can in fact actually recreate this almost missile look so I'll be sure to showcase that in his review but once again honestly just such a smash design in my opinion the perfect sound wave now despite the robot mode looking absolutely sensational when we turn to transformation it is a little different story as I'm not entirely sure as to what Hasbro and Takara were cooking up when they put this together as it has probably one of the most unusual and definitely one of the most abstract alt forms that I personally have ever seen so let's get straight into it of course firstly you are going to want to remove both of the weapons so just wriggle the shoulder cannon off we can then come here to the head straighten that out spin our attention to the back take the hands and collapse them into these cavities come to this side and of course repeat the same process we're then going to want to open these panels here out on the shoulders and come to this side and do the same and then rotate here at the bicep just like so and then in fact rotate at this pin joint so you're going to want to arch this entire section here backwards just like so and it will in fact actually soft click into place so snap that in there you can see that we've got two hooks here and here that will in fact actually peg into these slots so we're going to hinge this section up and then snap that into place come to this side and repeat the same process snap that into place and you can see we've got a tab here at the top of the forearm that will peg into this slot so bring that down snap that there into place and of course come to this side and snap that one in we can then turn our attention to the front you're going to want to pull this panel out rotate it 
like so, take this, hinge this up, and also rotate this. Now you can see two tabs here and here that will peg into those slots, and a massive slot that will peg into this tab. So bring this down, snap that into place. We can then rotate here at the thigh, so that they are now facing inwards. Come here to the back of the legs, pull this out, and once again, check out the paint and scob work that we've got going on for these. Just such a wicked figure. Pull this section all the way out, and of course come to this side, pull this section all the way out, take the foot, rotate this here, and in fact straighten that out. So come to this side, rotate the foot, straighten that section out, and essentially we're going to utilize both of the joints here at the knee. So bring that in, and then shoot this backwards, and you can see a tiny little tab there that will in fact peg into a cutout here just below the skirt region. So shoot that in there, and you can see here at the base of the foot we have a slot that will peg here into this tab. So just align that up, snap that there into place, and of course repeat the exact same process for this side. It is a little finicky as of course we don't have as much clearance here for this cockpit region, but just insert that in there, snap those two halves together, and of course align that tab and slot up and for some finishing touches bring these sections of the knee pads forwards and personally I actually like to take this panel and bring this forwards as I do think this is something that's actually been given a miss. I kind of think this is supposed to be an almost cassette player and if you actually bring that out it almost acts like a tripod but we'll touch base more of that in just a second. We can then take these weapons here and these will in fact insert into the tabs here on the back of the arms so we can take the shoulder cannon, tab that there into place. And of course, take the gun, peg that in there. And here we have Soundwave fully transformed up into what appears to be an almost Cybertronian cassette slash Cybertronian hovercraft. Now, I won't even begin to sugarcoat this. Honestly, this is just awful. It's definitely one of the worst vehicle modes we've ever seen for the Cybertron characters and especially for the studio series. It really doesn't resemble anything upon first glance. I actually showed it to various different collectors and none of them really were able to come up with a definitive answer. I did in fact actually watch one of those special features that were on the Bumblebee movie Blu-ray and it stated that Soundwave is supposed to transform into a Cybertronian hovercraft so I guess that's what this is kind of going for but to be honest I really don't think it would have taken much for Hasbro to have kind of found a way to have got this guy transformed into a Cybertronian cassette as all of the traits were definitely there in the robot mode and actually I think the conversion for this is a lot more complex than it really needed to be. Now as we take a closer look here at the details of course this is a complete brand new region I guess this is in fact the cockpit you can see underneath this transparent section we've got some really nice sculpted in detailing which is pretty decent you can see there some nice golden outline detail you can see the scot work is very impressive and i guess this region is supposed to be a cockpit but i guess it's just this entire front thing it looks kind of like a cybertronian crab or maybe a pair of cybertronian binoculars it really doesn't look like anything and these knee joints look super super ugly even with the guns attached here onto the side it doesn't even really look like a gunship so definitely very uninspired i guess when they put this together and as we flip here to the underside you can see it literally is just Soundwave crouched with his arms and legs curled up not a lot going on here here at all. Now as mentioned you can in fact deploy this skirt piece which kind of acts like a tripod to prop him up and in this form I do think he kind of resembles a little more of a cyber training cassette. Of course if you collapse this down he is literally just a flat hovercraft and once again really doesn't resemble much. You could in theory actually place some of the headmasters in there and I guess he could act as an almost drop ship especially if you utilized the cassette deck there but honestly who's really going to display Soundwave in this mode? He never transformed in the film so I'm definitely not going to be detracting any points from this figure for this particular form. I'm just glad that they nailed the robot mode and that honestly is the only form that I was really hoping that would look astonishing. So truth be told, I kind of see this as a really rubbish bonus extra as of course it just doesn't resemble anything at all. Now for a very quick comparison, here we've got the Cybertronian Soundwave compared next to Cybertronian Starscream of which Hasbro and Takari did a smashing job in actually creating a vehicle form for. You can see here Honestly, definitely don't really get aircraft vibes from this at all. It doesn't even really resemble a tank. I guess he just kind of converts into a crumpled mess. Maybe this is him in an almost camouflage mode where he kind of just goes into his valence form, transforms into this almost flat ramp for the Autobots to essentially just be tricked and walk over and then gathers the information that he in fact hears. I don't know, honestly, really, really lost for words. But I guess once more, who's really going to display him in this form it is, of course, going to be all about that robot mode. So some final thoughts for this Transformers Studio Series Bumblebee movie 
movie, Voyager Class Soundwave. Honestly, guys, I love this. I think this is an awesome figure, in particular, of course, in the robot mode. Hasbro and Takara have given us an absolute knockout and probably one of the best SS live action figures we've seen all year round, even being a rival for the Autobot Dino, of which I was just so thrilled with. As to me, growing up as a kid, there was no such thing as a Dino, and to actually get it this year, I was jumping with joy, but I actually think this here tops him. This looks wicked in bot mode, almost exactly how he appeared on screen, no back kibble at all. They've even detailed the back, which we very rarely see, especially for live action movie figures. The back of the legs look great, the proportions look great, the detail for the head is awesome, the accessories, in particular that shoulder cannon looks wicked, and the icing on the cake truly is the cassette deck. I just was not expecting them to implement a spring-loaded mechanism, especially considering in the film, Soundwave never actually pushes a button and ejects. Ravage just sort of pops out, so I was expecting maybe just a closed hatch that you would have to manually open and close, but nope, they added a fully spring-loaded gimmick, which is wicked, though transformation of course is very simplistic and results in something which honestly I have no words for. I really don't actually know what this is supposed to resemble, but as mentioned in that segment, the alt mode is definitely not how you're going to display this guy, and I guess considering it's Cybertronian, who are we to say this doesn't actually appear on Cybertron? So with all that being said, if you're a fan of the Bumblebee movie, even if you're a fan of G1, and especially if you're a fan of the live action movies, then this guy definitely gets a high recommendation from me. He's so awesome. He definitely lives up to the hype and the anticipation that's been building up and honestly after three years since we actually saw him debut on screen I'm so glad that they've waited and truly given us an almost perfect figure and here's hoping they take the engineering from this and apply it to a movie masterpiece as I truly think they could cook up something so so special so with all that being said I really hope that you enjoyed this review if you did please do let me know down in the comment section below I'd love to know what you think of the figure do you rate it as highly as I do and of course be sure to stay tuned for the upcoming review of the Transformers Studio Series Bumblebee movie Core Class Ravage I thank you guys all so much for watching and until my next review I'll see you then thanks for watching